Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Southside Worship Center on this hot summer day. We've got air conditioning inside of here, so it's, it'll be a good morning together. We won't have to worry about the heat until you leave. But uh, we're really believing that God's going to do something great in our service today. And so why don't you stand with us? We want to open our service in prayer. And we're looking forward to spending some time worshiping together before we continue on in our Time to Rebuild series today. And so let's just pray together before we start the service. God, thank you for the opportunity we have to gather together as your church. And Lord, we thank you that uh, you are alive. You are working in our midst. You're working in us and through us. And I pray today, Lord, as we've come and gathered together and we're going to present our worship to you, Lord, that it would be like a sweet aroma that comes to you. So Lord, today we don't make anything that we're doing about us. It's all about you, God. It's all about what we can offer you now in this, in this meaningful time of worship together. So Lord, would you be honored and glorified by the, the words that we sing, by the way that we receive your word today, Lord, by the way we interact with one another, and may you continue to do all that you desire inside of our hearts so that we can go into the world and make disciples like you've called us to. And so Lord, bless your people, Lord, and bless you now, Lord, as we worship you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So stand with us as the worship team leads us. Yes. Your grace empowers me to win. 
to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are, there is no one like our God, there is no one like our God, greater things have yet to come.
as I come to your presence, past the gates of praise, and to your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace, and I can only bow down and say, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba the Father. presence, past the gates of praise, into the sanctuary, till we're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace, and I can only bow down and say, you are awesome in this place. Mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father, as we worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, Mighty God, and you are awesome in this place. that you have created and given me. Lord, this morning we say you can have it all. Speak to us, Lord. Call us, Lord. Call us to action.
in this place. We worship you, Lord. We thank you and we worship you. You are worthy of our praises, Lord God. We just thank you for the privilege of gathering together as your body today to sing praises to you, to worship your name, Lord. We thank you that we can worship together with people who have come here for the first time, Lord, that we can worship you with people that we haven't seen in a couple of years who are back, Lord. And we thank you that you are in this place, that you are awesome in this place, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for the prayers that you have answered this week. We thank you for the opportunity to meet a new children's pastor shortly. We thank you for the prayers that you have answered in this church, in this community, and in our lives. And even as we thank you, Lord, and we give you all the praise and all the glory, we still remember that there are people that come here in pain and in suffering, that we are all here experiencing brokenness and sin. And Lord, we just pray into each of these situations. For the people who come here experiencing pain in body, Lord, we pray right now. We know that you are the great physician, Lord, and we pray into those situations because we know that you are the great healer. For those who come in sadness and in brokenness today, we pray into those situations right now, Lord. We know of your great love for each one of us, that you want each one of us to be connected to you through Jesus Christ. And I just pray right now into each of those situations. For those who are experiencing mental illness, I pray for them right now. For those who are experiencing spiritual brokenness, I pray for those people right now that they will come to a new and deeper understanding of who they are in Jesus Christ, even right now, Lord. I thank you for your Holy Spirit working in each of these situations, Lord. And as we continue to worship you through the rest of this service, as we worship you through the word, as we learn more about what it is that you have for us, I pray that we will leave here as transformed people, that your word will root deeply in our hearts, that you will transform us, that you will reveal to us the role that you want each of us to play in building your church. I pray that your Holy Spirit will move, will just move so freely in this place that we will leave here as new and different and transformed people. I pray all of these things in the name of your mighty son, Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning, church. And as we're all standing, it would be a wonderful time to just greet somebody. Um, you know it's a really intense experience when our, our worship leaders are sweating in a room that's, you know, really cold. So uh, just go and greet someone and let them know that, you know, the joy of the Lord is in this house. Morrison, how you doing, sir? And if you're online, just put in the chat something about, you know, where you're worshiping from. We'd love to reach out to you as well.
right south side. Let's bring it back in. Let's bring it back in. All right, all right, all right. So I just wanted to formally greet you all this morning. It's a blessing to be here with you all today and worshiping the Lord. Amen? So the first thing I, I want to talk about this morning is offerings. Thank you for your faithful giving. Tithes and offerings, you know, God has a way of multiplying it. I'm reminded of the story of Elijah who goes to a woman and she has just a, a little bit of food just for her son and her. But God somehow does something, right? He, he takes that little bit and, and he multiplies it. And, and my prayer for you all is that God will take your little bit and multiply that by 30, 60, and 100 fold. So there's two ways to give. Um, my favorite way is to go on southsidewc.com, hit smash that give button, and it's a very quick process for you to just give online very quickly. Secondly, if you are a little bit old school and you like to give in person, just um, give on your way out. Our, our ushers and our team here know exactly where to do, so if you have any questions, just reach out to us. And I do have a few announcements. Have you ever felt like you've just gone through a week and, you know, you, you've been fervent in prayer before, but something just happens and something just you know, kind of bruises your spirit? Or maybe you're going through something hard and you just want someone to agree with you in prayer? Well, the Bible says that God is in the midst of twos and threes, amen? So at, on, on, on Mondays, as we gather here, bring whatever problems, situations that you may be facing that you just want someone to just join you with and to pray because we believe that prayer is the vehicle of change, amen? All right, so we'll see you here Monday at 6.45. I know Pastor Josh is really excited about the Mondays. And um, I do have two announcements for youth. This week we have a, um, a very cool activity. It's about trusting in God. And parents, I'm going to need you to be involved. I did send some emails out, um, but I, I would like to get some more responses so we could just, you know, make sure this activity is, is impactful for our youth because our youth is the next generation, right? So we want to make sure that we're doing the most that we can to pour into them and to have them hear God's voice and catch a vision for themselves where they can be rooted and grounded in, in God's kingdom. Our third announcement is for the Youth Wonderland trip. August 24th, it's going down. Southside takes Wonderland, right? So if you want to go and you haven't got, um, signed up yet for some reason, send me an email or just sign up on the sheet outside. Um, the cost for the trip is $45. And last but not least, Pastor Josh does have a special announcement, so I'm just going to invite him up. Thank you, Pastor Adrian. And uh, yes, I'm very excited about prayer these days because when we pray, things happen, right? And we've been praying specifically over the last uh, just a month, but, you know, I was expecting it to be longer, but we've only had to pray for a month. Pray with faith that God would send us uh, a kid's pastor, and he has. And I want to introduce that person to you now. We're going to have a little conversation. So Pastor Caleb Owens, would you come and join me? <laughs> well, just before I ask a couple questions of uh, Pastor Caleb, I just want to, again, uh, let you know that God is so faithful. Um, if, if you had joined us at prayer on Monday nights, you'd know that the week after Pastor Laura left, I said, guys, like, we, we have a big challenge here. Uh, there's no kids pastors available. Uh, in fact, I had phoned the Bible college and said, who do you got graduating next year? And, and for all of Ontario, the, the 500 Pentecostal churches in Ontario, we have three kids pastors graduating. So you can see the challenge that we faced. But at prayer, we said, well, we've already seen God do some things. We've been praying for young families to join us, and they've joined us. And so if God's orchestrating that, then he's going to set it up that a kid's pastor will be here. Amen, Amen right? And so uh, I remember saying to Ali, I said, you know what? We need someone like a Caleb, is what I said. Um, but uh, Caleb had some, he was planning on doing an internship in Newfoundland and different things like that, and, and just... I'm not saying God caused the program to change, but circumstances changed, and all of a sudden, Caleb became available, and I reached out to Caleb uh, in the middle of July, and we had a great first conversation, 
And the thing I said to him is the same thing I've said to everyone here as, as I've started leadership here at this church. We're going to be a church that depends on God. And I said, Caleb, even though you're actually on the top of my list as someone that I would like to hire, I said this to him in an interview, which is maybe not what you're supposed to say, but I said, I don't want you here if you're not supposed to be here. I said, I want you to be here if God wants you to be here. And I said, let's take a week, let's pray. It ended up being a lot longer than that. We ended up praying about it and going through the process, and it was probably about three weeks or so. And uh, it just, all along the way, God has brought confirmation along the way. And so I'm excited to introduce Pastor Caleb to you this morning, and I just have a couple questions that will help you to get to know him a bit more. And so, uh, Pastor Caleb, obviously we know each other a little bit, but some of these uh, fine folks don't know you. Tell us a little bit about who you are. Who's Caleb Owens? Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I am Caleb Owens. Uh, I've lived in Ajax my, my whole life in North Ajax. Um, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, North Ajax, the place, yeah, lovely. Um, so I've, I've grown up in the church, I gave my heart to Christ when I was five years old. I'm a pastor's kid, my parents, Rob and Ruby Owens, have pastored at Pickering Pentecostal Church for uh, over 30 years, so I've grown up in the church, I've come to, uh, to love God, I love um, His Word, I feel like I, like, like study is where I really find uh, God's voice and really His, um, just what He's saying to me, so um, I, love, I love reading the word. I love worship. It was a beautiful worship uh, service this morning. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, the songs were even, like, fitting. Like, there is no greater call than giving you my all. I'm over there emotional in the corner because I'm recognizing what God is doing here and what God is doing um, in, in my life. Right. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm currently studying at Tyndale University. I'm entering, entering my fourth year there for their biblical studies and theology program with a Pentecostal focus. Um, and presently, I'm working at Fairhaven's Ministries, which is a camp up in Beaverton, just about an hour away. And I'm working there. It was a summer job, so I finish up at the start of September. So that's a little bit about myself. Awesome. Thanks, Caleb. Yeah, we're uh, excited to have you here. We'll ask another question that will sort of uh, um, get to some more of the stuff that I'd like to talk about. But something that's important uh, for pastoral ministry is that there's a sense of calling that we have. We're all called, in fact, Nehemiah 3 today is going to remind us that we're all called to serve within the church, but there is that special uh, calling that comes from the Lord for full-time or, or vocational um, pastoral work. And something I've learned along the way as a pastor over the many years that I've been, been in that role is pastoring is the best place to be if you're called to be there. I've seen some people that have stepped in that role that haven't been called to be there and just maybe fulfilled a spot. And it's, it's, it's not the place you want to be if you're not called there because God wants us to be in those places where he's called us. And so uh, being called to ministry is something that's very important to me in terms of a pastoral role. And so, Caleb, tell us a little bit about your call to ministry and why kids ministry? Why, why is that important to you? Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. So I... Um, again, growing up in the church, I was always like an outgoing, loud kid. So a lot of people said, oh, Caleb, one day I'm going to hear you preach up there or something like that. And I took that with a grain of salt as I was growing up. I just thought, oh, are they just saying that to me? Um, but I felt like really in high school is where I was sensing God um, genuinely pulling me towards ministry. And it was at a senior high convention in grade 11 where um, God used uh, Pastor Jeremy. Uh, he, he came up and he spoke and he gave a word saying that there was a young man here wrestling between um, two uh, two careers, two vocations to walk down, one of them being ministry, and they're very torn. And I was sensing that, entering that service and throughout that evening, and um, it was just that moment. I'm, I'm so thankful that God made it so clear to me because it's, it's crucial. So I experienced that, that moment there, and I'm, I move forward, and every step that I've taken towards ministry, God has just placed the next, the next uh, plank for me to walk on, the next step to go, the next kind of move forward. Um, studying at Tyndale has been, has been a blessing, um, and I, yeah, I just, I feel that, like, it started from so young, my, like, my call to ministry, those things that people were saying to me, because I am a, um, I'm a testimony to faithful children's ministry. I feel, I, I grew up in the church, and I, I can recall, uh, moments when I was eight years old at an altar at Lakeshore Pentecostal Camp. I can think of conversations I had when I was 11 years old in the, in the grade six Sunday school classroom, um, and I, I know the, the value of children's ministry. I know what that means to me and how, how genuine my relationship with God has been from a young age. Um, I, I know that there are genuine steps we can take in our faith 
um, in, those, in those early steps and, and our relationship with God and our knowledge of him can, um, it's not something that we are to wait on. We're not supposed to look down on people because they are young, but our children can be examples. And I, what, what I find so fulfilling in children's ministry is what I learn from the kids because um, I've, like, I hear different perspectives from them than I may not have considered myself. I hear new things that they have to say because um, it's just so, so innocent, so raw, and so genuine. Um, so I have, a, I have a heart for that. I also, um, I really value intergenerational ministry. I see various generations here um, this morning. I see the worship team. Um, I see there are so many people in the body of Christ is made for us to, to work together. It's for, us to set, for kids to set examples and for uh, parents to, to impress these commandments on their children's heart is what Deuteronomy 6 talks about. So I see how the body of Christ can be incorporated and integrated as, um, as a body. Um, and I, I have a heart for, for that as well. So, yeah, I want to see the kids involved. I want to uh, cultivate and encourage those moments and just allow God to work because um, he will. He will. We, we're believing. Amen. We believe Amen. That's just even confirmation there. I feel like you're peeking at my notes for my sermon. It's just like I started talking about some of those things. That's awesome. Last question for you is, uh, is this, in, in, in what ways, Pastor Caleb, has God been preparing you for this? Man, so I, um, I've, I've served in children's ministries for, for nine years at PBC. I've had the opportunity to work there for, for three summers in the past. Um, this past summer, um, or 2021 summer, um, I was given the, the, the opportunity to, to lead the children's ministry and to be the camp director for the kids' camp. Um, and entering that, because I knew it was going to be a big, like a, big, a big task that summer, going April to August, um, leading the children's ministry. Um, I, I prayed at the beginning and all throughout that summer. I said, God, this summer you will confirm in me that this is where I am to go, or you'll show me what's, what else. You'll show me what else is there. And my passion for, um, for children coming to know the Lord and coming to grow in, his, in their relationship with him has doubled since then. And I, I, like, I, it, it's beautiful like, to, to think about and to consider like the, the potential of children to serve and to serve the kingdom and to love God and to be in relationship with him. So um, that past summer was super um, influential for me. Um, I also, I'm very thankful for like Pastor Laura's leadership. Um, I've gone to PBC as my home church my whole life, but in, 20, in December 2014, my friend Lucas, who is here this morning, uh, he drummed this, uh, this morning, he he, we, we went to school together. We've gone to elementary school all, all the years, Lucas and I. And he said, he's like, Caleb, you want to come to my youth group's Christmas party? And I said, sure. So I went that evening, and then I got connected with Southside in 2014. Um, I had the, the great opportunity to serve at, at, I think, three of their kids' camps in summer 2015 and 2016. Um, so it's almost surreal being back in this building and um, in this new uh, new. A vocation, this new calling that God has planted those seeds so long ago. Um, so I'm thankful for like the time I spent under her leadership and her um, just sensing her passion for children and how that kind of resonated with me and the team there. So yeah, this past or this current summer working at Fair Havens is really showing me um, just how worth it is to take a step of faith and to walk forward in God because I've never lived away from home or anything. I'm only I'll be 21 in October, so I'm fairly young. Um, but I, I wanted to, to try something new instead of uh, being in my comfort zone. And I, I said, God, I'm going to take this step of faith. I'm going to go work at this camp an hour away. Um, I've, I've lived in Ajax. I'm a sub, suburban fellow, I'd say. So living up in the forest has been a, a task, and it was intimidating. But I, I learned this summer just the value of what it means to, when you know what God is calling you to, um, why walk elsewhere? Why walk sideways? But stay on the straight and narrow path. And he will, he will show you where to go. His word will, light, will be a light to your uh, lamp into my feet and a light into my path. So I've experienced that, and I, I know what it means to, to walk in God's calling, and I know the, um, just what, what, he's, what he's up to and what he will do when he just has faithful people willing to serve and willing to, to give their all in that calling. So, yeah. So good. so good. Yeah, there's no superstars around here. We're all just called to do what God's, right? And so if we're just willing, like you said, again, you picked my, my, my sermon here, Caleb. But uh, I want to pray for Caleb. I want to pray that God would use him here. Again, you know, uh, kids' ministry is important to us around here. Young people are important. We're going to see this church bursting with young families. And uh, I just love how God has orchestrated everything. And he's really setting us up 
for the fall. I'm anticipating great things. If you, if you end up walking downstairs at some point today, you'll see we've got a little reno going on downstairs because we're getting that room down there because we're believing we're going to see tons of kids down there in the fall. And so uh, would you extend a hand towards Caleb at this time? Caleb, I'm just going to have you stand here. I want to pray for you. Lord, we thank you for the fact that you work things out. Lord, we just have to pray, we just have to believe, and we just have to walk through the doors that you've opened, and God, you make a way for us. And so, Lord, in this moment, we start by giving you thanks. God, you have arranged this, you have set it in my heart, you've set it in Caleb's heart, you've, God, confirmed it along the way, and we're so thankful, Lord, that when we trust you, God, you make things happen. And so, Lord, I just pray, Lord, for Caleb now, Lord, I thank you for his heart, I thank you for his experience. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do through him, Lord, here at this church. Lord, I pray, God, that you would give him vision. Lord, pour into him vision for our kids' ministry. Lord, I pray that, Lord, we disciple our kids. We disciple young families. We would help raise up a generation that will love you wholeheartedly. And so, Lord, use myself, use Pastor Caleb, use the rest of the team, use us in this church, Lord, to help see kids Young families, youth, Lord, raised up to be all that you desire them to be. And so, Lord, I pray a blessing over Caleb today. I pray, Lord, for a double portion of your spirit upon him so that he can do all the work that you've put into his heart to do. And, Lord, as we faithfully step out and do what you're calling us to do, we'll trust you, God, that you'll bring the people and that you'll bring the children and that you'll bring the youth, Lord, and we'll be able to see Durham transformed for your name, Lord. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in our church. We give you glory and praise today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you, Caleb. So Pastor Caleb will be joining us officially on staff on uh, September, Sunday, September 11th. And uh, he's just finishing up his time up at uh, Fairhavens. And then he will uh, be joining us when he gets back the week after Labor Day, which is Sunday, September 11th. Well, Seth, did you follow me around there when I was walking around? We've got, sorry, we've lost a little space at the back. Uh, we were just trying to think of ways that we could engage our um, online audience a little bit more. And I don't know if you knew this before, but our camera was way off into the left, and I just sort of felt like I never looked at them, and so now we've put it right by the clock so that I get you out on time, and I'll remember to engage our, our online friends. And it also gives us an opportunity, just we, uh, as you saw today, we had a huge team. just gives us a chance to um, be a little bit more creative in terms of our, our services. Well, this morning we are continuing through our series called Time to Rebuild as we go through the book of Nehemiah together. And at this point along the way in our series, we've learned that uh, Nehemiah discovered that the walls of Jerusalem were in ruins. It bothered him so much that he cried out to the Lord to say, God, what, what is it that you want me to do? And during that prayer, God stirred in Nehemiah's heart to go and actually talk to the king. Now, if you remember, the Israelites were in, in exile at this point, so um, they, they didn't really have any authority or any power, and so Nehemiah going to the king, he was the cupbearer, but, but, but other than that, he didn't have any influence, really. And so he went to the king with a bold request. We talked about that last week. And it was a request for the king to release him to be able to go back to Jerusalem and help rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. It wasn't just that he would leave. Nehemiah had that bold request, again, in Nehemiah chapter 2, that that the king would allow him to have resources. He gave him a letter of permission, so if he faced any opposition, he'd be able to walk right through those, those guarded areas. He made this bold request to God and to the king, and God honored that and allowed him to have favor. And today we find ourselves in Nehemiah chapter 3. We're going to look back at chapter 2 for just a couple verses. But in a sense, Nehemiah has landed. He's on the ground. He's in Jerusalem, and he's trying to figure out what's the reality of the situation. 
Nehemiah 2, verses 11 to 15, describes this covert mission that Nehemiah attempts during the darkness of the night. Essentially, everybody's sleeping, and Nehemiah wakes up in the middle of the night, sneaks outside of the city, and he's inspecting the gates. He's inspecting the walls. He's inspecting every part of of, uh, the ruins so that he can get a better idea of the situation that he's facing. Nehemiah 2, verses 16 to 18, says this. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing because as yet I had said nothing to the Jews or the priests or the nobles or the officials or any others who would be doing the work. Then I said to them, You see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king had said to me. You know, I've only been at Southside for just under four months as your lead pastor. And and, and when I came in the spring, I said to myself, and I I prayed to God, I said, God, I'm just going to take some time to learn. Just going to take some time to observe. I'm going to take some time to to learn about the unique culture that is at Southside, to get to know the people, to discover some of the challenges that we're facing. In many ways, I sort of felt like Nehemiah, just wanting to go out and to survey, what's going on here? What is it that we need to do? Where can I get my bearings before we start to, to lead? And I've discovered a few things along the way as your lead pastor. Things that I think that I felt in my heart before I came, but have been confirmed as as I've been here leading you. First, this is a good church. A good church with good people. Uh, There is just a desire to move forward at this church. There's a hunger for us to do our part. There's just this realization that God is doing something And we're ready to jump on board and do that. And I commend you for that. Because, to be honest, in some churches, people don't want to move anywhere. They want to stay right where they are. And that's some of the reasons why churches are declining and dying, is because people are making it all about them. But I've really sensed in my spirit while being here that people are ready. It's like we're ready to move forward. We're ready to step into what God's calling us to do. It's time to rebuild. And I commend you for that. I know that it's been a challenging last five years. I know that it's been difficult. And COVID only made it harder, right? We saw ministries end up being morphed or shut down. And it just, it sort of made it feel like we got stuck. But as we're seeing even from today's conversation, God is moving us forward. God is opening doors. And it's time for us to rebuild and and step into what God's calling us to do. And as I've been praying about Southside and praying for you and praying about our future and hearing the heartbeat of the people at this church, I just sense in my heart that we're ready to mobilize and we're ready to step into what God's asking us to do in this next season. But can I be honest with you? In order for that to happen, everybody has to do their part. Everybody has to do their part. I believe it in my heart when I said earlier, there's no superstars here. There's no one person that's better than... We are all a part of the body of Christ. And unless every single person is doing their function, it's not going to work. Nehemiah gathered the people together in Nehemiah chapter 3. He cast a vision for rebuilding the walls. He told them the story about going to the king and how the king had, had given him favor. He told them about how God's hand had been on him when he did that. And the people responded this way. Nehemiah 2, the second part of verse 18. They replied, let us start building. Let us start rebuilding. So they began the good work. This morning I want to share with you some ways that I believe God is calling us to rebuild here at Southside. And my prayer is, is that as you hear these things, some of the values that we have here at Southside, that in your heart, you would respond like the people of Jerusalem did. Yeah, let's start rebuilding. Because there's a community, and you only have to look out these windows to see them. There's a community around us of people that don't know Jesus. 
People that at this point along their journey are spending an eternity away from God. And God has strategically put us right here in this place, in southern Ajax, to to help people come to know Jesus. If it was left up to only a few people, we would never be able to reach our full potential here at Southside. See, sometimes we think that we, we can't sort of do it all because maybe we don't have the skills or we don't have uh, the time or we're too busy. But I'm challenging you today as our church that as I go into these things that I sense in my heart that God's calling us to do, that there would be that desire to say, yeah, let's start rebuilding. Let's, let's get on board. The beautiful thing about the body of Christ is God has set it up so that as each person does their part, we're going to see God's glory fall in this church and in this community. And people are going to experience the love of Jesus. I, I may be the lead pastor who provides spiritual oversight for this church and gives spiritual oversight to our services, but ultimately we'll never be able to reach our full potential and do all that God wants us to do if everybody's not doing what God's asked them to do. You know, one of the burdens that's been on my heart, and you're going to know it because if you've come to prayer or you've been a part of our services at all, you know where I'm going with this. But one of the burdens that's been on my heart is young families. You probably saw it come out in the passion that I had, had when I was talking to Pastor Caleb. But I'm going to declare to you until you're sick of hearing it that this is going to be a church that believes in young people. This is going to be a church that empowers the next generation. This is going to be a church where where kids can come and be discipled. Because there's too many kids that are being lost for eternity because the church hasn't made space for them. Children are not going to be an afterthought at this church. They're going to be a central point, a focus point, where we can see them grow up to be all that God desires them to be. And so uh, I'm sorry that my passion just oozes young families. That doesn't mean that we're not going to be a church for, uh, for adults or for, or for seniors or different things like that. But the heartbeat, the future of the church is always the next generation. And we're going to be a church that just, just values that. And so I'm looking for people. Pastor Caleb's going to be looking for people that just have a heart to love on kids, to serve kids, to disciple kids. We're anticipating that God's going to bring young families to us and new kids, and we're going we're gonna to need people that can help us in the, in the discipleship process. My, my, uh, my dream for this church is that the older and the younger would be able to connect. Sometimes you go to churches and the, and the younger are over here and the older are over here, and they never interact with each other. But we miss out on what God desires to do if we don't connect with one another. And my desire is to see the older pour into our younger, into our next generation, show them and teach them some of the lessons that we've learned along the way. And as the younger step out and do what God's calling them to do, and they step out with that childlike faith that we can learn from, that it would inspire us as the older to remain faithful to what God's called us to do. We're going to be a church that continues to serve our community through our, our food bank, through the relationships we have with the nearby schools, through, through the other outreach initiatives where we have an opportunity to share about Jesus through both our words and our actions. And we need people who are going to be compassionate, people who are okay with maybe working behind the scenes, people that will just be able to love on people and show the love of God through, through tangible ways. We need to be a church that... that is committed to discipleship. I'm a firm believer that disciples aren't made in rows, but they're made in circles. And that's why this fall we're launching small groups. And I'm so excited to tell you that we've just had such a receptivity to this idea of small groups, to relaunching those after not having those for several years, that that it's looking like we're actually going to have at least six small groups in the fall. Praise God, right? There's going to be opportunity for us to rub shoulders again with other Christians. It's great to be spiritually fed through the word of God in this context, but sometimes you just need to sit in a circle with some people and, and, and sort of talk about what's going on in your heart. Pray for one another. Encourage each other. Lift each other up. Become friends with one another. 
And that's something where, when, as you look at the disciples, they were, a, they were a small group that hung out with Jesus, and that was how Jesus discipled them. And so I want to encourage you as we step into the fall, we're making space in our small group so that you can be a part of that because we believe in discipleship around here. I said this from the very first week that I, that I came to Southside, and I said it again here today when I interviewed Pastor Kayla, but we're going to be a church that depends on God. Oh, I'm learning, you'd think I'd have already learned this lesson after years of it being in the ministry, but I'm just, again, amazed that when you depend on God, He opens the door for you. And so prayer, prayer is a big deal around here. Uh, I know even Pastor Adrian said, Josh is excited about prayer. Yeah, because when you have 25%, sometimes 40% of your church praying, you know God's going to do something, right? And that's what our Monday night prayer meeting is like. We come, we worship together, we pray together. We're often praying for out there that God would just get our hearts ready and that we would be a place that would receive new people that don't know Jesus. And so I want to encourage you, don't try to step into what we're going to talk about today as we talk about doing your part. Don't try to do that under your own strength. We need God's help in that. We need to depend on God. And in that same breath, we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. I know this is a church that believes in the work of the Holy Spirit. And I want to, again, challenge you in this moment. We're going to be a church that allows the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and do his work through us. Because if we try to do it under our own strength, guess what? Not going to work out. We're going to fall flat on our face. But as we trust the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, he'll lead us into everything that, that he wants for us. Finally, before I sort of get into Nehemiah chapter 3, I want this church, and I've said this to some on the hospitality team, and they do this so well, I want our church to be the warmest and most caring church in all of Durham. I want people to walk in, and before they even hear a pastor preach, before they even hear any worship, that they've walked in and they've been greeted with a smile, they've felt the love of Jesus, there's been just sort of like an aroma in this place of just something going on here, and it's because the love of God is just oozing out of us. And so we need some people. We need some people that know how to smile. We need some people that, that just love seeing new people come in. We need, to, we need some people that are going to make this the warmest and most caring church that we could possibly be. My, my heart is that anybody that comes in would just sense the love of God through the way they interact with us. Can I commend you in this moment? You're already like that. And, pa and, 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 and I just called you pastor. <laughs> and Ali and myself have really sensed that. Our families sense that. Even just coming in, you've just embraced us. And it's just been like we've been here for years, even though it's only been four months. And I just commend you and say, keep doing that. Because that's what God wants us to do. Here's the problem. All the stuff that I was just talking about, that never will happen unless everybody does their part. Again, if we leave it just to a few people, we're not going to reach our full potential. Again, sometimes, I said this earlier, sometimes we think that, that uh, you know, we can't do it because we're busy or because maybe we're afraid or because we don't want to commit. Nehemiah called the people together because he realized as he inspected the wall that he couldn't do it on his own. The king had given him a time frame. When are you going to be back? And, and, and he knew that if we were going to accomplish this work, everybody was going to have to do their part. And so he mobilized them. He got them involved. And I'm inviting you today to plug in and to serve. Nehemiah chapter 3 is one of those chapters that if you're reading in your devotional time, you may find that temptation in your heart to just skim through it. Because it's literally a, a list of everybody that did everything, right? So it's not one of those most in, in inspiring things to read. You're reading names that you don't quite know how to say and what they did. But can I tell you that there's no word wasted in the Bible. Every word in there is there for a reason. And this list in Nehemiah chapter 3 is intended to remind us that everybody has to do their part when working for the Lord. And as we look at this, this chapter today, 
we learn that the people of God were used, all of them, to help rebuild the walls. And the people that were used were actually very diverse. Everyone was so different. But yet they came together for a common purpose. They were from different locations. That's number one for the guys upstairs. Sorry, I didn't give you notes today. They were from different locations. The people rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem came from all over the place. They came from different regions within Judah. Now, think about it like this. Judah was a province. So it was sort of like Ontario. So if Judah was Ontario, it was like this. That word got out that the Christians in Ajax needed help. And all of a sudden, the other Christians from, from Kingston and Belleville and Toronto and, and Thunder Bay, they all collected down in Ajax to help with the work that God was doing. That's sort of like what happened in this situation. Word got out that we were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and people came from all types of different places. Nehemiah 3, verse 5 says this, The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa. Verse 7, Repairs were made by the men of Gibeon and Mizpah. Verse 13, The valley gate was repaired by Hanan and the residents of Zanoah. Everyone was coming from different locations to help with what God was doing. And Nehemiah 3 is a reminder to us, as even I look out in this space today, that we're all from different places, and God brought us together to do his work right here at Southside. Again, as I look around, I see people from different locations, from different cultures, from different ethnicities, and God's brought us together here because he desires to do something here at Southside through us. We learn from Nehemiah chapter 3 that, number two, they, they had different occupations. The people that came together, they weren't all one type of person with one skill. They weren't all builders or, or in that profession. Nehemiah 3 verse 8 says this, Uziel, son of Harhera, one of the goldsmiths, repaired the next section, and Hananiah, one of the perfume makers, made repairs next to that. So you've got a goldsmith who probably knows what he's doing, and you've got a perfume maker, they're working side by side. They're working next to one another to rebuild the broken walls. The work was done by people that didn't necessarily have all the same kind of skill sets. No, everyone came together to do whatever part they needed to play in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. And as I look around today, I see a bunch of people with a whole bunch of different gifts, talents, and abilities. You may be like me, and maybe you're not supposed to be up on the stage singing. That's probably not the gift that God has for me, but he has a different gift for you. A gift to, to serve maybe behind the scenes, or a gift to be on our media, or a gift to be in our food bank serving. He has something for you to do. And as I look around this room, I see people who are doctors, nurses, stay-at-home parents, business people, teachers, even retirees. And each one of us has gifts that God wants to use to build his kingdom. And the beautiful thing is, is that when we partner together with his church, he's going to use all those skills to do something amazing. We learn from Nehemiah chapter 3 that they were both male and female. So gender wasn't an issue here. It wasn't that the guys just had to do it while the girls did something else, or vice versa. We learned that the men and the women worked together. Everyone did their part. Nehemiah 3, verse 12 says, Shalom, son of, or sorry, yeah, son of Halohish, ruler of the half district of Jerusalem, here it is, repaired the next section with the help of his daughters. What a beautiful picture of what serving can look like. There wasn't an attitude, again, that, uh, you know, this is a guy thing, you, you stay home. Or this is a girl thing, and, and, and you go do that. No, men and women came together, and they used the gifts that God had given to them, and they did the work of the Lord. Finally, we learn from Nehemiah chapter 3 that they were from different social classes. The rich... And the poor, they served together. The people of high status, 
Well, they worked alongside those with lower status. The respectful people that lived within the city, they worked alongside with the common people that lived outside of the city. Nehemiah 3 verse 1 says, The high priest and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. Verse 18, the repairs were made by the Levites. Verse 9 and 12, rulers of specific areas worked on the broken wall. And then as we've already mentioned, verse 8, goldsmiths and perfume makers repaired the wall. The project, the work, was so big and so important that everybody, whether of high status or low status, had to come together to rebuild the broken walls. I love that God doesn't just use one social class to accomplish his work. He doesn't just use those who are powerful or in authority or have influence to make a difference. No, he he sometimes even uses, he often uses, the person that seems insignificant, person that seems like they have nothing to offer, because often it's in those moments that we see God's glory even more. Because someone steps out in faith and does something miraculous because God shows himself through them. So it doesn't matter if you feel important or if you feel unimportant. You are supposed to be here. And God is simply looking for us to have a willing heart. So as the band comes today to lead us in a song of response, my question for you is this. Are you a willing person today? Are you a willing person today? Are you ready to say, God, whatever it is that you want me to do in this next season at Southside, God, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and to serve you. Do you know the reality is is that they often say that 20% of the people do 80% of the work, right? They often say that in churches. I've seen that that's not true here at Southside, but I want to encourage you that I'd love to see every single person do your part. That doesn't mean that it's a weekly commitment or it doesn't mean that it's, it's going to overbear you. But I want you to be doing something so that as you come to worship God, you're not just taking, but you're giving. You're giving your worship. You're giving your worship through service. You're giving your worship through allowing yourself to be a part of the body of Christ. So this morning, our conclusion has two parts to it. The first part is I want to make sure that your hearts are willing. And in a moment, we're going to sing a song called I Give Myself Away. And it's just going to give you an opportunity in that song just to say, God, I give it all to you. I give you my life. Lead me into what you're calling me to. And so would you stand with me as we sing this part of our response? And then I'm going to come up and give um, just some quick directions for our last part.
give myself away so you can use me. So he. to the Lord, it means you're no longer you. You're no longer yours. You're His. And so I just pray that this would be your prayer this morning, that your life isn't your own, but it's His to do whatever He wants to be done with it. So just let that be your prayer this morning. that's our prayer this morning. Lord, our life is not our own, and as followers of Jesus, we recognize that. Lord, we gave up our life a long time ago to follow you. Sometimes, God, we're tempted to take it back. Sometimes we're tempted to do what we want to do. Sometimes we're tempted to think it's all about us. But Lord, in this moment, we've been reminded that you called us to take up our cross and to follow you. And so our life is not our own. To you, we belong. And so, Lord, I pray in this moment, God, that you would reignite that passion in our hearts to serve, to do what you've called us to do, to not believe the lie of the enemy that we can't do anything, that we need to live in fear, that we are just sort of called to sit on the sidelines, but, God, to know that you've called us for just a time as this, a time to Go and to do what you're inviting us into so that we can see your church grow and expand. And so, Lord, I pray that there would be a willingness in all of our hearts. God, not to do someone else's part, not to do something that you haven't called us to do, but to do what you've invited us, us into so that we can function as the body of Christ in the way that you've desired us to. 
So God, may you find willing hearts in us today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I want to have you seated just for a second as I just share with you the second part of our application today. And it sort of comes at the conclusion of our service. You may have noticed that we have some signs around uh, today. And uh, just some areas of ministry that maybe you might want to consider being a part of. For those that are helping to lead those areas, there's some clipboards over here uh, with a pen if, if someone wants to uh, sign up or, or at least uh, get some information. When you go to these areas today, I want it to be very clear. If you put your name down, you're not necessarily signing up. You're just saying, I'd like some more information about small groups or about what it would look like to maybe serve on one of the hospitality teams or the food banks over here. Maybe you have a passion for youth and you say, you know, I don't know if I could commit to every week or something, but if you need some help with something, Pastor Adrian, uh, you know, I'd love to just be involved in some capacity. There's the youth ministry over there. I see at the back we've got the care team. I said in our sermon this morning, I want to be the most caring person. And maybe you're not able to sort of help on something on the stage or help, you know, lift boxes for the food bank. But maybe you have a heart that knows how to love people and pray people. And you would love to pick up a phone and call some of our people that aren't able to come out, some of our shut-ins. That's all what the care teams do. They, they do a lot more than that. But, but that's one of the areas that maybe you'd want to serve. Uh, there's not a sign here, but the kids' ministry one is here because I assume there'll be some of you that want to introduce yourself to Pastor Caleb. And so the kids' ministry area is right in front of me when the service is done. But uh, I want to encourage you. Um, I know we've went a little bit over today, but just before you leave today, uh, take a moment and just connect with some of these leaders and, uh, and just find maybe a place where you could get involved in the fall. So can I pray for you and then I'll let you go? God, thank you for your church. Thank you for what you're doing here at Southside. Lord, we've described it in our prayer meeting. I've described it as, Lord, we're on a wave right now, and we don't know what you're doing, but we don't want to get off this wave. And so, Lord, I pray that as we continue to step out into what you're asking us to do, and we ride this wave, God, that you would take us far beyond where we ever thought we could go, because we're depending on you, we're trusting in you, and we're using our gifts, Lord, to serve you. And so, Lord, as we have conversation with one another now and maybe learn about some different ways that we can get involved, I pray that you would just confirm it in our hearts as we talk to, talk to different ones. And so bless your people today, God. Give them a good rest of the day and bring us all back safely tomorrow night. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great rest of the week online. Thanks for joining us. And uh, leaders, your clipboards are here for those different areas. And we'd be happy to connect with you before you leave.
for those who have been uh, contacted by Maureen for the small group leaders and host meeting, uh, we're going to do that now. So if, if, if you didn't know about that, then we already have a meeting planned. But, uh, um, but it's just for the ones that have been reached out by Maureen and you knew of that. We're going to go into the meeting room over here and uh, we'll collect there and start the meeting in about five minutes, okay? And if you're on the worship team, there's a meeting next week after the service. Thanks, Diane, for that. So if you're on the worship team or media, there's a worship 